Hello everyone, great to see you today. My name is Pastor Neil and welcome to Refill with Pastor Mag. That's right, we like to make it confusing here. I am in beautiful Custer, uh, South Dakota in Custer State Park here in uh, South Dakota. It's a wonderful, beautiful place and I apologize for not getting uh, a refill out yesterday. Life has just been absolutely crazy and uh, I continue to work and try to make it better. But this is such a beautiful spot here in Custer State Park. I just had to stop at the visitor center and do a, a refill right here. So anyway, I hope you enjoy the scenery. If you get bored, look behind me. It's just absolutely gorgeous here. Uh, but we are in Psalm chapter three, or excuse me, chapter 43. And so we're just gonna read like we usually do, and then we're gonna break it down together, okay? So Psalm chapter 43. The psalmist says, Vindicate me, O God, and defend my cause against the, an ungodly people from a, the deceitful and unjust man. Deliver me, for you are the God in whom I take refuge. Why have you rejected me? Why do I go about mourning? Because of the oppression of my enemy? Send out your truth, or send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. And then I will go to the altar of God, to God, my exceeding joy, and I will praise you with the lyre. O oh God, my God, why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. Now, did you see that? There's something really interesting right there in verse 4 and 5. Why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you in turmoil within me? You remember that? A couple days ago, we read Psalm 42. And he says that twice in Psalm 42. At the very end, verse 11, Why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you in turmoil within me? I hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation, and my God. These two psalms seem like they're linked. They've got them, some things going on together. In both places, the psalmist has a problem in their heart, a problem in their life, and yet they choose to go against the cast downness in their soul, the turmoil that they're experiencing in their heart, and instead they focus on their hope in God, they focus on praising Him, and they focus that God is their salvation, not themselves. They place themselves in the hands of the God that cares and loves, for, loves them. Now, I love how this starts off here. It says, vindicate me, O God, defend my cause against an ungodly people. You know, it's easy to feel like it's you versus the world or, or your group versus the world, whatnot. And the psalmist here is feeling that way, that there's an ungodly people, that deceitful and unjust people are coming against him. And he's asking God for deliverance. In fact, he says he takes refuge in God. That leads us to a question, where do we take refuge? When the world feels like it's against us, when we feel like we're being beaten down, where do we go for our refuge? Where is it that we can get out of the wind and the rain and the storm of life? Where is that place of safety? I hope it's in God because he's the only true refuge there is. He's the only one with the ability and the power and the strength to protect us from everything that's going around. And he doesn't always protect us how we want him to protect us. He protects us how we should be protected and how his name will be glorified the most. You see, we're not on this earth to be sheltered and protected. We're on this earth to have a relationship with him and help him be known. Of course, he doesn't need our help. He's God, and yet we do that. So the psalmist continues on there, and I love how he says there in verse uh, 3, send out your light and your truth, let them lead me. You know, what is leading him other than light and truth? Well, it can be anything. You know, we go run after things all the time other than God, don't we? We run th after things that are not God because, well, they're safer than God. God asks us to do crazy things. He, he, is, he is a huge God, and, and sometimes we just want to run off after things that we feel are safe. Well, the psalmist doesn't want that. The psalmist wants to run after God. Send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and your dwelling because that's our ultimate goal is to have that relationship with him, that that going to his holy hill, his dwelling, his um, refuge. There it is. There it is, his refuge. Anyway, all of this compiles, all of this compiles with worship. You see, we have things going on in our hearts and our lives, and they're tearing us apart many times. 
We go to him over our feelings. We rest in him, our refuge, rather than our feelings. And we worship him for who he is, rather than what we feel at the time. You know what? This can be a hard thing. We live in a world that is obsessed with how we feel, with doing whatever makes us feel happy or feel right. And God says, no, it's bigger than that. God is bigger than that. Will you let your feelings push past or push past your feelings and go to what you know is true? Whether you feel it's true or not, will you push past that and go after that which you know is true? And that thing that's true is God. That he would love us so much that he would send Jesus. That he would send Jesus to live a perfect life. That Jesus would die on the cross for the wrongdoings, the evil that we do. And that Jesus wouldn't stay dead, but that he would rise again. And through believing him, believing in him, we can have that restored relationship between God. And that God can be that refuge, that place that we can go and have that relationship with him. You know, I hope you believe that. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed getting together with these refills. We're going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep tweaking these so that we can spend more time together. Thanks for joining me on these refills. Um, if this has been helpful, like always, if you'd hit that like button or that heart button on Instagram, helps the algorithm know that uh, this is something that's helpful. And if it's something that's helpful, share it with others. We want everyone to know Christ and who he is. And also, like always, we meet at 1010 in Crossroads Church at Custer, South Dakota. And it does not look like a normal church. It looks, it's a brown building. It's just a steel shed on the inside. It's beautiful, but that's not the point. We want you to join us at 1010 in South Dakota in Custer. But if, if you can't join us live, that's okay. Join us on YouTube. We also stream at 1010 on YouTube. And you can find us by searching Crossroads of Custer there on YouTube. And finally, whether I see you in person at Crossroads Church or if I see you on YouTube or I see you when Christ returns, I'll see you real soon.